People who work at remote places like forest officers, oil rig workers, etc. What creepy things have you noticed while at work? Part 4. Please make sure you share and subscribe our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. Merchant Seaman here. Nothing particularly creepy. Most of the time you're too focused on not hitting anything, getting position fixes, updating logbooks, etc. To really think about paranormal or spoopy shit. But the closest thing to creepy I've experienced recently has been a strange transmission over the radio. It started with a series of Morse code beeps, followed by an accented female voice listing off random letters and numbers. Don't know what the fuck that was about. Edit, I should clarify. It was definitely a numbers station, and obviously radio propagation is a thing, but this was off the Gulf of Mexico on a hot ass day. Account 2. I do a lot of work out in the woods. Creepiest thing was finding some headless doves. I also found sticks arranged in circles and paint on the trees in the same spot. Not sure if it was part of a ritual or not, but that's what I saw. Edit. Okay. Lots of great points that it could have been just wildlife or cats catching the doves. That's totally possible. I've seen cats do that before, too. To add some more context, the type of doves found were not native to this area. It's possible they escaped or were released and had a run-in with a hungry house cat, and the painted circle of trees and sticks nearby was coincidence. Who knows? I certainly don't know what really happened, so it's all speculation. It's still the weirdest, creepiest thing I've ever found. Account 3. I used to work at a Boy Scout summer camp. Every week I had to take a big group of campers to a secluded spot for their wilderness survival badge where they had to build a shelter out of sticks, leaves, etc. and sleep in it overnight. The spot was only about 1.2 mile from the main camp, but we took them a circuitous route that made it seem really secluded. Anyways, on this one night all the campers had made their shelters. We had cooked dinner and were all just sitting around the campfire. It was getting late, maybe 11 Saturns, so I sent all the campers to their shelters for the night and started cleaning up the fire. That's when we heard in the distance what sounded like church bells. They were pretty faint, but myself and my fellow staffers could definitely hear them. They went on for about 30 minutes, ringing every 30 seconds or so. We were all a little creeped out, as there were no churches or towns within 20 miles of us. After the bells stopped, though, the singing started. It was too faint to hear the words, but it sounded like church choir music but a lot of people, and a lot more enthusiastic. Also, it was almost midnight at this point. The singing went on for well over an hour, sometimes quieting down until we almost couldn't hear it, sometimes getting so loud we thought it was getting closer. All of the campers were super creeped out, but I lied to them, telling them there was a church service going on in camp and that there was nothing to be scared of. Eventually, at almost 1 a.m., the singing stopped. I found out a few days later that there had been a large KKK rally only a few miles away that night, and that's what we had heard. Account 4. I've camped near a river, and in the middle of the night I was convinced that I could hear people chanting, but I couldn't make out what. In daylight, I realized that it was just the sound of the river running over stones. I've often woken at 5 a.m. and imagined all sorts of things, but as soon as the sun rises, all fears go away. Account 5. I used to be a delivery driver, which doesn't sound very remote because it isn't. However, I did have to deliver to some pretty remote places. One time I delivered to a trailer park just barely inside our designated delivery zone, and it was very dark and poorly lit. I leave my car running and keep the headlights and inside lights on to go deliver the pizza. Upon returning to my car, I sit down in the driver's seat and look up to see a creepy old man standing less than three feet from my side of the car. He was just staring. It was the equivalent of a jump scare. I just started driving forward, had to do a U-turn to get out of the park. When I turned around, the man was standing in the middle of the road. So I freaked out for a second before speeding around him, only to watch him attempt to chase my car out of the trailer park. I put in my two weeks after that. Account 6. I was on a boat sitting on anchor in a secluded bay in the early hours. In southeast Alaska a few years ago, I stepped outside for a smoke 
and all of a sudden I heard the most horrific sounds of a wild animal being murdered by another wild animal. It went on for probably ten minutes. I know it's just nature, but man, I can still hear that sound in my brain and it haunts me. Account 7. I was a field geologist in the outback about 12 hours north of Adelaide. One day I was driving the truck and saw what looked like a flagpole sticking up in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't anywhere near a farm or anywhere else that people would be, so I decided to drive over and check it out. It was a dead dog fully impaled on a spike, like from butt to mouth. Took some pictures and had my boss call the cops. But for the rest of the assignment, I was freaked out that some maniac was out there with me. Edit. I don't know if it was a domestic dog or a dingo or something. It was pretty well decayed when I found it. Account 8. I'm not sure if this counts because it's a farm. But when you live on a farm, you work on a farm. So I guess I'll tell it. I grew up on a farm. And in high school, used to mess with my friends by hiding and making them find me. One night my friend was over and we were waiting on this other guy. We see him pull up so we take off running to hide. It's funny because they have to wander around somewhere they're unfamiliar with or go ask my parents and be told too bad you'll have to find her. It's like forced hide and seek. Anyway, this one night I saw my friend hide in one building while I ran for the trees. I was hiding under some bushes and heard breathing, like human breathing. There were no animals around. It creeped me out so bad I ran out of hiding to greet my friend. I felt so uncomfortable for the rest of the night. Sometime during the night my dad heard something and went out to investigate. In the morning he discovered that one of our cows was killed and butchered. Account 9. I worked night shift at a prison for years. The one thing that really creeps you out is when a hit is put on someone in the middle of the night, inmate's code says it is kept as quiet as possible. No one says a damn word. The only thing you'll hear are grunts and moans from the victims. Then it goes and stays silent. If you hear it happening, it's already too late to stop it. It'll be over before you pull your keys out. Occasionally, if someone needs medical attention, the first sign we got was an inmate approaching the bars saying they need to go to medical e and are usually bleeding all nonchalant. The creepy ones are where no one shows up. All you get is grunts of pain and that's it. Account 10. Lived up north for a while on a three-year job. A local took me way out into the woods one night because he swore that at midnight, at this one spot, you could see the ghostly carriage where some people froze to death, obviously expected to see nothing. So we're sitting there in absolute pitch-black darkness. You can't see your hand in front of your face or anything around you. The sky is slightly, slightly gray from the thin cloud cover reflecting distant lights. But that's it. You can't even really make out the tree line. We never do see a carriage. Or anything. At about 12.20 or so, we're just smoking and chatting, thinking about leaving. When we hear the unmistakable sounds of someone walking through the underbrush. Loud crackling of breaking sticks and branches. But still, everything is black. It gets closer and louder, but we don't see anyone coming. There's nothing. And all we can think is how it's basically suicide to trudge through these woods at night. Good way to get a stick in the eye at the very least. And eventually you will twist an ankle or break something when you step off a ledge. The ground around here is very uneven. But it's definitely someone coming. Crack, snap, snap. In the pitch black, nope. We drive the hell out if there. We weren't afraid it was a ghost. We were afraid it was a person insane enough to be marching through the woods without a light. Do not want to meet that guy. Update, for those of you comforting yourself, that it was just an animal. When I say up north, I want you to imagine a place where you literally have to drive three hours to arrive at the closest city, and another three after that to get to the next one, and when I say noise, I'm not talking squirrels. Think rhythmic, and think large branches snapping on the ground. I'd been up there long enough to know what a possum sounds like. That big it might have been a bear, but a bear wandering around at night is not normal, which I suppose means it would have been pretty messed up, and that makes it worse, moose. Possibly, but those things are scarier than bears, no joke. They're the size of a truck. Use those antlers at anything that gets too close and disappear into the woods like ghosts.
but we didn't hear hooves, so. Account 11. I used to work as an alligator hunting guide for trophy hunters during my summers, south of New Orleans. Spending sun up to sundown deep in the heart of Cajon Swamp territory definitely left me seeing some weird and creepy things. The first one that comes to mind is when I saw what my hunting partner at the time called the Lou Giroux. I personally would have called it a chupacabra, but that's because I'm a native of the Southwest, not the South. We were riding through an area deep in the swamp looking for signs of a big gator. The banks were close on both sides of the boat. There was barely enough water for us to push ahead. But those mud boats are impressive and can practically run on dry land, so onwards we pressed. Suddenly, I saw a gray flash in the trees out of the corner of my eye. It made me nervous. Swamp deer are small and shy. There's not many mammals that want to hang out in thick undergrowth and knee, deep mud and hidden gators. I tapped my partner's shoulder to catch his attention over the sound of the motor and pointed in the direction I saw the flash. He cut the motor and asked if it was a gator slide. I shook my head and said I had no idea what it was, but I saw something. As we were looking around us, the creature I saw stepped out from the trees. It was big on all fours. With mottled gray skin, its movements were janky, jerky. It had a canine-like face and it locked eyes with me and I felt sick to my stomach. My partner immediately struck the motor back up and we reversed out of there as quickly as we could. My rational brain said, poor creature with mange, either a massive coyote or maybe a wild dog. But my primal monkey brain was screeching, monster, run or die. It was definitely a freaky experience, even knowing what it probably was. Account 12. My story isn't exactly what was asked for, but should be good enough read. In middle school, I worked at the school during the summer, doing general painting and helping the maintenance guys. We had to drive out to the fuck-off middle of a Floridian forest to pick up some pine lumber for the gym's new bleachers. And when we got to the mill at like 7 a.m., the whole place was locked down with police. They had found gasoline cans and pill bottles out in one of the tree farm groves, telltale signs of kids abusing substances. But supposedly the cops were there because they found human remains. I was pretty young, and I don't remember anything outside of my little kid point of view. But I remember seeing streaks of dark blood running up the trunks of several pines. I've since learned from the guys I was with then that a teenager was killed by a bear after attacking it. And the blood was either from the wounded bear climbing the tree or dragging a hurt person up with it. But I'm sure many of you can agree with me that bears don't do that. And I can't see an injured bear making it up several pines in a row while bleeding that much. So technically, I saw a creepy thing while at work in a remote area. Look up Lakeland Mill casualties or something to find it. The story of the kid's death was in the local paper. Account 13. I'm a machinist, and I was working by myself in this old warehouse at night. I would see stuff moving around, and I would get creeper out. This is when ghost hunters became popular. So I started to ask questions. What's your name? Can you show me that I'm not alone? Seconds later, a 3,8 Allen wrench came bouncing across the shop and landed at my feet. It didn't fall of the machine. It slid. I was cutting micarta, which is like wood, and you could see the slid marks in the chips. I said thank you to the ghost, shut down and left. I never went back. Account 14. I don't work out in the woods or anything, but me and my dad were hunting in the Porcinos. So me and my dad were sitting in a hunting tower. It was cold as balls out. And we start hearing what sounded like one of those old religious chants, where they sing all together in Latin while walking in a straight line. It kept getting closer, till we saw movement ab 20 meters ahead, and then we saw a group of abbot 10 to 30 people wearing all white holding candles, and then abbot 5 more people with rifles and shotguns standing in the front, the back, and on the sides. We let them pass, and they were staring at us as they walked by. It was scary as all hell. Apt 10 mins. After they walked by, we went over to where they were standing, and it was snowy out there, and there were zero footsteps in the snow, and till this day we still don't know what the hell we saw that day. Account 15. I used to be a delivery driver, but for a supermarket in the UK, a lot of our customers were in the middle of nowhere, and my last delivery of the night was a new customer I'd never been to before. I was already running late from all my previous deliveries, 
and I was still trying to find this house at 10.30 p.m., even though my shift was supposed to finish at 10 p.m. I'm driving around the narrowest of country roads with nothing surrounding me but dark fields and hedgerows, looking for anything that might be a driveway. I hadn't seen another car or person for miles. Then all of a sudden I hear a loud thud on the side of my van, like something was thrown at it. No trees or anything else around for something to fall from. And I remember it specifically hitting the side. I looked in my mirrors and out the window, but there was nothing around me. Then it happened again. Another thud on the side of my van. I drove back to the supermarket so fast and told my manager that I couldn't find the place. I had spent 30 mins looking to be fair. There was no house where the listed address postcode took me.